Hello and welcome to Pro Trader Strategies Market Commentary for Wednesday, May the 2nd, FOMC Day. My name is Eric Wilkinson. Some of you may recognize me as the Wolfman from CNBC, Fox Business, or even the Wall Street Journal for my commentary on everything from economic to geopolitical and market analysis. Please take a moment to read over this disclaimer as it talks about everything I say in these market commentaries is general commentary. It does not constitute investment advice. The reason why I can't give you investment advice is because I don't know what's in your risk for it, or I don't know what's in your portfolios. I don't know what's in your risk, what your risk parameters are. It's a mouthful. Uh, and therefore what I'm doing could be counterintuitive to what you are already doing. And bottom line is past performance of any trading system or methodology is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, having all that out of the way, let's get it on with economic data across the pond. Uh, not really a whole lot. We did get some PMI numbers pretty much in line with expectations, but it's not their flash PMI number. So it's not really uh, a robust number that we're looking for. But out of Great Britain, we got construction PMI came in at 52.5, higher than the expected 50.5. Then we roll over here to uh, the United States and we got ADP non-farm payroll change came in at 204,000 in line with the expected 200. Thousand. Now, remember that ADP number is an indicator of what we will see on Friday's non-farm payroll, which is the most important uh, uh, data point for employment. This is just kind of a precursor, kind of like uh, API versus the e, uh, the uh, the uh, uh, DOE, Department of Energy. Department of Energy is the more important number for crude oil inventories. The uh, the other one is just a precursor. The DOE, they have to report. With the API, that is more of a voluntary basis so they can say whatever the heck they want. But with this one, we got the, we got the crude oil inventories coming in at 6.2 million barrel build. It was expected to be a 1 million barrel build. There's also builds in uh, crude oil and things of that, or uh, sorry, and gasoline, distillates, things of that nature showing there isn't a whole lot of demand for the amount of crude oil we're getting out there. What happened to crude oil inventories? Yes, they rose and it didn't do anything to the futures, which is a little bit disconcerting uh, for a bear in that case, because with that big of a number, that seems like there's a lot of bullish undertones there uh, for that market, not to crack on that economic data point. Finally, we get the FOMC statement today on whether or not they are going to raise rates uh, I think that they're going to leave them unchanged at 175. That's what's expected. I don't really see anything going on that would really make them jump a little bit earlier. The next move is supposed to be probably closer to uh, June is what we're looking at right now for the next hike. But I think they're going to hold off on this one. All right. Then on to the overall markets. We talked about this crude oil really not cracking much off of that uh, huge build. Gold futures, slightly higher. Everything's a mixed bag. And it's mostly due in part to, I think, a lot of shoring up of positions ahead of this FOMC statement. But gold came down, touched the 200-day moving average yesterday, kind of pierced through it for a minute, but did settle above that. That is uh, a good win for the bulls anyway. The bears would have liked to have it settle below there to kind of extend those move that move down to the uh, 61 Fibonacci level, which happens to coincide with the point of control. And I've kind of been talking about that move for quite some time. It hasn't happened. They kept pushing it. Remember, we had Russia going out there and buying uh, 2,000 tons of gold, which drove the prices higher. Now that they're kind of done with that, we're starting to see this market roll over uh, like we would expect. All right, Bitcoin futures. Did settle below this uh, 23 Fibonacci level. It's right there at the point of control where the most time and volume has been spent for this product. I'm still under the uh, belief, uh, the market assumption that this is going to go down and test 5880 before we start resuming to the upside. A lot of iffy news coming out around Bitcoin and at these levels it makes it very difficult for the miners to make money producing those coins. So uh, that's also another aspect to Bitcoin that we got to keep an eye on. Uh, bonds moving slightly higher today as I think they got a little overdone, a little overzealous to the downside on the increasing interest rates are taking a little bit of that out right now. We are above the nine day moving average, which is slightly bullish. It's not a major bullish uh, move, but this uh, top here, we need to get above there to really resume any type of upward momentum in the bonds. I have nothing on there. I'm just kind of a, a sideline watcher 
for that one. VIX moving slightly lower today, still up in the teens, if you will, but uh, we got a real mixed bag in the overall equities, as you can see here with the NASDAQ, or sorry, the EMIT. It's none of those. It's the Dow Jones Industrial Average, ladies and gentlemen, down about 60 uh, points, maybe 50 some odd points right now. 60, let's call it 60. But yesterday's move late in the day to the upside made a lot of these look like we were trying to form a bit of a bottom here. So uh, keep that doji in mind. You know, you can see there's, they acted as support about three times across the board here in that late day rally made that doji look like it was a sport, somewhat like this one. Um, not a major indicator right now because it's not at the top of a move or at the bottom of a move, but it is uh, bouncing off of the 200 day moving average. Then we have the NASDAQ, as you can see, this is those late day rallies that we were talking about NASDAQ just slightly in negative territory a minute ago they were almost in positive but they're bumping up against this 23 Fibonacci level uh, which coincides with the 50 day moving average this is a major line uh, you know you, you can almost fill in between these two lines and that is the resistance area uh, it's a big thick sharpie line there uh, and then we have the mini S&Ps lining up with the time Point of control. This is where all the volume has been spent, but we've spent a lot of time here, which acts as a magnet also because people get comfortable seeing that price and aren't as panicky, even if they've lost money or are down money. At this point, they know where they stand. So that has a tendency to calm the markets down around these levels. And we have this resistance area right there. So um, it is really a strong magnet for those. And then we look at the daily chart of the mini S&Ps. This is what I was talking about, that late day rally basically going into the into the day. My uh, charts would stop at one o'clock for the daily chart. So you can see basically almost as soon as I got done with the daily market commentary, that was where the low was. Uh, and then we started rallying all the way into the end of the day. So they got all this inventory short and they flushed them all out. Uh, overnight inventory was probably a little bit long covering and into the day. Uh, a lot of just jockeying back and forth, kind of shoring up positions. All right, let's talk about what my earnings trades were. I went into Apple and I ended up doing a strangle in there because I wasn't really sure what direction it was going to go. Uh, you know, I've just not seen a whole lot of uh, push to go out and buy those new phones, the uh, iPhone X and the 8S, I believe is the other one. I haven't seen a whole lot of chatter about that so i wasn't really sure but you know apple always has a tendency to do well so i wanted to play it to the upside but protect myself to the downside so that's why i did the strangle and i went into the may that expire on friday and sold the 157 and a half puts and combined that with the 177 and a half calls to create that strangle sold it for a dollar 27 i did it i covered this trade on the open as you can see um I didn't get it quite as good as here. As, as a matter of fact, I covered the 57 and a half puts were closer to 60 cents when I uh, got out of those. I did I did get out of it as a strangle. So I, I got out of the uh, 157 and a half, 177 and a half strangle that I sold for $1.27. I bought it back for 63 cents. And basically it was all in the uh, 177 and a half calls. So as you can see, even overnight, they traded up to one, it was a dollar in my face. But on the open, I got a little bit of a flush out. I think I got out right around in here. Uh, and that's where I got out of those puts for around 60 cents. Got out of my calls for, or sorry, got out of my put for about three cents. Got out of my calls for right around 58 cents. So pretty much a stretch on the calls, made the money in the puts. Also, it got a little bit better. I saw those. Uh, calls go down to around 45 cents at one point in time. So I could have gotten a little bit better, but I like to cover these off the bat in the morning, especially when they're looking like they're going to go against me, which Apple was. So I'm happy to get out of that one for uh, a nice little profit. Finally, um, MasterCard, I took off. I put a trade on. I played this to the upside, as I talked about in the daily market commentaries. We're seeing this. We're seeing lower wages, higher spending, higher rents, things of that nature is going to force the consumer to buy things on credit card, which is what I was expecting for MasterCard. Got the pop that I was looking for. In the May, I sold the 170 puts for 46 cents, bought them back for a nickel this morning. So 
nice win in that. That's the only trades I've done for today. Looked at a couple of other ones. They weren't looking so good. We also, today we have Sprint coming out with earnings. Uh, don't know how I'm going to play this. Probably the upside if, if Apple's doing pretty well, the rest of the uh, this space is doing well, then I'll probably play it to the upside. I'm going to do a little bit more digging, see what uh, AT&T and Verizon did. Just a double check on that one. Tesla, I'm probably going to stay away from it because I got the two-year puts on, right? I don't want to mess with those, so I'm going to be riding that out. I think it's going to go to the downside. And Apache is another trade that comes out today after the close. I like Apache. They always have a tendency to uh, win to the upside or uh, beat to the upside, uh, except for this one time it looks like. But for the most part, uh, probably going to be playing this to the upside. But again, game time decision. Follow me on Twitter uh, because that's where I'll be throwing this stuff out. Kellogg, I'll be playing to the downside as the rest of this space has gotten crushed. Nobody's eating cereal anymore, it doesn't look like. And finally, uh, which one I'm not going to play with, it's Ferrari. Just so you guys uh, get to see it, their race sim or their symbol is race. I like that one uh, for a symbol for sure. So those are the ones that I'm going to be looking at today. Uh, probably play Kellogg, Apache. I'm going to skip over Tesla and hit Sprint. At least at this point, I'm missing. I'm going to skip over Tesla. I might sell some calls in there. Maybe small. Uh, we'll have to see. But that's all I got for you guys. Give me a thumbs up. Thumbs down, like or dislike on this video. Give me a comment also, especially if it's a dislike. Let me know what I'm doing wrong. Friday's webinar is going to be a really good one. Go to ProTraderStrategies.com. Sign up for that. And uh, that's about it for today. If you can't take that, take it easy.